happy Sunday, people, and thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Grand Prix World. Uh, I wasn't actually going to do an episode today, but I had a monster recording session yesterday, and the editing work is going to take a lot longer than I anticipated, so at some point during the midweek, unless a, a miracle takes place today, you're going to get a super long video that's going to have me introducing it as Sunday. But that's not Sunday, today is Sunday, and... We are here for round two and probably three, and maybe even four if we get lucky, of the 2001 season. We had a really good start, um, really, really positive, with a double points finish last time out. The AR2001A has proven to be competitive, very much so. Sorry about that, an obligatory crash, because <laughs> that's basically how we do things. Um, taking a look at the news, Frentzen won from pole, Pedro Deniz picked up. Uh, just outside the podium places there. Uh, we're all very happy to have two cars in the points. Lauren Vidal has signed for Minardi, so he's replacing either Jan Magnussen or Mika Salo. Uh, David Coulthard picked up the fastest lap for Benetton. Pedro Diniz has bought a seat with us. Shinji Nakano will move to Prost, so he's replacing either Marini or... Um, What's his name? Hackenham. Um, Ferrari are pretty sure they've got a deal with Heinz Frenson, which is bad, bad news for us because he was our primary target, although he, he was edging towards being a little bit too expensive. And Tyrrell are um, trying to sign Esteban Tuero, which would be a good move for them, I feel. So, has Frenson actually signed? He has not. Now, because he's talking to Ferrari, we're going to have to significantly up our offer. And it, it it all hinges very much on how how well put together our sponsor package is for next year. We're in a good position in that we don't have many big deals to worry about. So uh, I don't know. It's difficult. It's very difficult. I think I think that's arguably too expensive. Arguably, but I did take a look at the comparison between him and Fisichella, and he's he's worth the difference, if only in how fast he is. Um, I think signing him is pretty much going to guarantee us the championship, to be perfectly honest. So let's see if he'll take 7 million with a 2 million bonus. Hmm. He will not. Uh, he's, he's really pushing out of our price range here. Let's try hacking in again, same offer. He's a little bit happier, but still no closer to signing. And Irvine was our other option. We'll give Irvine a little bit of a boost, and that ma that championship bonus is way too high. No, he's still not talking either. Oh, and the Carnot hasn't signed with Prost, but he's, it, he's in the running for the Prost seat. Let's retry Damon Hill. No, again, all the same problems. They can change their mind between races, so... Um, okay, Fissy Keller. We'll offer him a million if he wins the championship. Still not happy. I was hoping to get that finished this round. Um, I know I didn't give you guys much time to give me feedback, so I'm going to still hold off before I sign Loretti, and I'm going to try and see if we can't get Frenson. If we can't get Frenson, then I'll go for Fissy Keller. Uh, it's just worth checking what people are prepared to sign for, because you never know, we could have picked up a, a bit of a, a bit of a coup by picking up Hill for half price. So always worth a shot. Uh, over on the commercial department, everyone's still available, so... We will see if we can get Rob Armstrong for our maximum 5%. We can. What about Dominicali? If he takes 5%. No, he won't. Is there any one? Is there any fours kicking around? There is not. So, Rob Armstrong, congratulations. You will be our head of commercial for three seasons, starting 2001. On the design front, we're still chasing Rory Byrne, although I suspect we're going to lose out. However, Despite the, the massive size of that investment, 4.2 million is serious cash to drop on a designer. 
Um, even with that in mind, we're only going to go backwards if we don't take him. Um, so we really need the sponsors this year. We'll offer him 4.9 million for a season. He needs a little bit more and he needs us to have some more sponsors signed, which I understand actually. John Barnard is already signed up and Carl Gaden wanted more money as well. This is hmm, close. I'm thinking I'm thinking Nigel Stepney might be the Okay, so we've basically got a deal in principle with Nigel Stepney. We just need to have some more sponsors signed. Um, and for Carl Gaden, we just need to boost his pay a little bit more. So we're very close to uh, a deal there. Um, now, we have budgetary problems. Um, we lost 1.5 million last round. And we need to find a way to bring that down. Now, the biggest costs are testing and personnel. I don't think there's any benefit for us in firing people at the moment, but maybe we should hold off pushing forward with um, with further expansion. And I think I'm going to... Yeah, construction is costing us half a million. That's not actually as... Hmm. Right, well, first of all, let's look at what, what's non-negotiable. Transport. Uh, transporting everything to Australia cost us $451,000, which is serious dollar dollar bills, y'all. Um, but there's nothing we can do about that. Likewise, operation of the factory cost us $637,500. Uh, services for our drivers cost $2,000, so they're nice and cheap. And wages for that period cost us just over a million. Um, Construction work cost us, um, oh this is year till now, 477500 so 240000 of that was the last round. And testing has cost us 700000 each round so far. Petrol and lubricants has cost us 12375 and we've spent $770,000 on hospitality. Now, um, I believe we've already run testing. We have indeed, and hmm, what's going on here? I thought we'd started a project here. Why can't I start work if we know what we have to do? Do you ever get a feeling you're missing something really important? Testing is complete. We need to upgrade the. Maybe I need to have some staff free. Can we please? Ah, we already have started it, that's why. Duh, idiot. Alright. I'm put 20% on the B spec car. Given how competitive we are, it's worth investing at least in the early part of the season. And we're going to spend uh, these development points to boost things along nicely. So the 2002 car's got an extra point on it now. Um, we've made a good start on the first stage of the B-spec and we're very close to addressing a reliability problem with the brakes. Nice, nice, nice. We've done our construction for this round, which means we have to just get the cars into decent condition. I'm going to repair car 3 every other round. On the sponsor front, Mixed news. Uh, obviously, we switched now to talking to Ferrari again, which hopefully everyone's okay with, but I think it seems to be uh, an engine partner who's prepared to deal with us, and hopefully they offer a multi-year works deal. If they don't, then we have to go elsewhere. Um, and it's not its not to say... Someone did mention after yesterday's episode, actually, I got a nice little uh, Google message, uh, that we haven't really given Peugeot a chance. And that is true. That is undoubtedly true. And I'm not necessarily against becoming a long-term Peugeot partner. Um, but more money will come into the team through dealing with Ferrari or Mercedes or Ford. That's just the way it, the way it is. Um, 
I'm very happy that, I mean, we're not getting very much money out of Goodyear, but I'm very happy that a two season works deals on the cards. And PIAA, I really thought we could trust to offer a multi season deal, but apparently not. We're going after the big, big money sponsors now. Uh, so we'll go after Danker as well, uh, HSBC, the works. Um, I think it's I think it's absolutely necessary that we uh, we get the highest paying sponsors that we are able to get our mitts on, and I don't want to continue to sell the team, nor do I particularly want to take out a loan. But that said, if we um, if we do then maybe that gets us through the season. We can borrow 10.3 million at 30% interest for 16 rounds. So basically it means this round next season we would have finished paying back the loan and we would have paid back a total of 13.3 million. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Um, let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. We don't have any investments at the moment because it didn't really make sense. We own 75% of the team, 25% is to various other investors, which is a pretty healthy balance. Actually, I, I, I don't... If you can retain 100% control of the team, that's fine, but there's no real benefit for it, and I, I think I think it's very realistic. Most team owners own a majority share, but um, you know, some people... I think Vijay Malia owns only 30 or 40% of Force India. I mean, he's still the biggest shareholder so he's in control but he doesn't own over 50% of the shares is my understanding um, however in this game we really need to retain 51% of the team or else we can be fired and <laughs> we don't want that to happen and they will fire you even when it doesn't make sense to so moving onwards I'm not going to push them to be any more aggressive at this time and again, we're focusing on the performance attributes, I think. I'm going to give Nakano a slightly different um, setup. Just to try and get a feel for, for what we get out of this attribute. Okay, we can deploy our second level active suspension and our Evolution 2 Peugeot engine. So we've got a power gain and a handling gain and a reliability gain, which is pretty pretty sexy stuff, if I do say so myself. Uh, we'll continue to run split strategy because it worked well for us last time and it seems our hard compound is not as weak this season as it was last year. And we are going to start paying attention to the Benetton's traction control <clears throat> and our race, uh, our race evaluation will continue to focus on Jordan. Right. Let's hope we don't bankrupt ourselves. 31 degrees, dry, uh, very slight wind. 31 degrees is going to damage engine power. But fortunately, cooling on our engine is excellent. So I don't anticipate too many problems there. It is going to be a problem for our brakes, I fear. So I would not be completely surprised to see us suffer either a brake failure or I, I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought a rear wing failure could become a problem because the rigidity of our engine is not particularly fantastic but the power is going to be creeping up and we could reach a point where the power is too great, the vibration's too too much and the supports for the rear wing are not strong enough. And the, that is simulated, you'll, <laughs> you'll see. Um, it is simulated, that's the detail that's going on behind the scenes. Don't underestimate um, what this game has to offer. So, let's hope for another good qualifying. Not terrible, not terrible. Uh, David Coulthard takes pole on a 117.3 for Benetton and Mercedes. Jordan Ferrari of Hightower Frentzen lines up second uh, with his teammate Alexander Wurtz behind him. They're all within uh, a tenth of each other. Esteban Tuero's Benetton takes fourth. Luca Badoa out qualifies Johnny Newhouse in the McLarens for fifth and sixth. And Shinji Nakano out qualifies Pedro Diniz. Man, Shinji Nakano. Don't you start don't you start being good, Shinji Nakano, because we'd already decided to fire you. Uh, Williams continued to be a full second off the back of uh, Juan Pablo Montoya's Tyrrell. 
Um, the Stuart Mechachromes running 11th and 12th have fallen behind the Prosts. Um, again, Prost are coming along okay. They're within a tenth and a bit of us at this point, so it's getting a bit cosy. Temperature's gone up for the race with a strong wind. The usual dance. I know it's getting boring, but if it ain't broke, didn't he fix it? Thirty-six, thirty-six. It does mean he's running on fumes at the end of the race, but that's exactly what we want. Right, do not let me down brakes or drivers or rear wing support struts. You didn't let me down. It's not a win, I don't think. But it is a podium finish for Shinji Nakano. Nice, Shinji. Although, look at that level of attrition. There were 11 finishes. <laughs> We had it, Pedro Deniz suffers an engine failure. Uh, brake failures for both Stuarts. Engine failure for Jean Lacy. Toro Takagi's Tyrrell had an unknown problem that brought his race to a, a premature halt. Rubens Barrichello's Ferrari had electronics failure. Suspension failure for both Williams. Brake failure for Giancarlo Fisichella's Sauber. Hydraulics failure for Jan Magnussen's Minardi. And Alessandro Marini's uh, Prost had a suspension failure. Michael Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya were the last finishers, three laps down, no less. Um, I think we could have picked up a 3-4 a or a 2-3 if Dennis had finished, to be quite honest. Uh, David Coulthard wins the race for uh, Benetton Mercedes on a 138-27. Uh, Johnny Newhouse McLaren Ford on a 138-31. Uh, takes second, and Shinji Nakano takes the final podium position. High Tower Frentzen's Jordan takes fourth. Fifth goes to Esteban Tuero's Benetton, and Alexander Wurtz is Jordan. Double points finish again from Benetton and Jordan. Um, takes the last points paying position. Nice, nice, nice. In the constructors, we're still third. Two points clear of McLaren in fourth, and eight points behind Jordan in second, but it's early days in the season. We've discovered level one traction control on the Benetton, which we're going to complain about, because otherwise that knowledge is useless to us. And we have broken even. We haven't gained and we haven't lost against the last round, which is good news indeed. I'm going to cut the video for a moment because I really need a drink. Back in a moment. Cherry Cola is the best cola and I will fight to the death anybody who disagrees. Um, we're going to look for active suspension on the Benetons now. Let's take a look what happened. Okay, we did make a loss of $159,648 books, but... That's a much more manageable loss to have. So David Coulthard wins from pole. Shinji Nakano um, is unhappy with third place and feels he could do better. Um, maybe, you know, we prematurely got rid of Shinji. Um, Benetton and Jordan both got two cars in the points. Ferrari have signed Heinz Halfrensen, which is bad news for us. Esteban Tuero will be going to Tyrrell, and we can't sign Shinji now because he's going to Prost. That has... that deal has been completed. So... Mm, let's sort our driver issues out first. So, Giancarlo Fisichella is our preferred driver one now, as agreed. Yano truly will be second choice to him, I imagine, but we're still going to be a little bit cheeky and see if we can't get Mika Hakkinen for budget books, and same with Damon Hill. I always liked Damon Hill. I think he's a driver who got a bit of a hard rap. Uh, people always talk as if his um, championship was a complete fluke, and it just wasn't. Um, oh, we're actually surprisingly close to a deal with Damon Hill for about half price, although he is 40. Um, actually, he's not hes not worth that money. <laughs> His skills are fantastic, but that is a real problem in my eyes. So, congratulations Mr. Fisichella. I think we can do a deal though with a 1.2 million championship bonus for two seasons. There we go. Giancarlo Fisichella will be joining the team next season. Hope everyone's happy with that decision. 
Sorry to see you go, Shinji, especially since you seem to have found your form, but um, you'll do alright. Um, <coughs> he has actually been um, a race winner, as I recall, so bad news bears that he's leaving, but we needed someone more consistent, and he has had two average and below average seasons, maybe, but he certainly hasn't been on the pace of the Niz. Okay, so we're going to finish this design problems. I will not go above 5.1 million for you, Robbie Byrne. Good, I'm glad that's acceptable. Uh, construction is sorted. Carl Gaiden. Okay, we've got Carl Gaiden for 1.589 million. Nigel Stepney, actually, we might keep because he's built a relationship with Mr. Deniz. Hmm. And that's that's a definite boost for the team. I think we should go for Stepney, actually. Um, I know it's it's going backwards against Carl Gaiden, who is five star, but it saves us six hundred thousand a season. Well, 500,000 a season with his new deal. Okay, um, let's see what's going on in Sponsorsville. What will Ferrari offer us? A one season works deal worth 11.4 million. That's a difficult one to call. That is a difficult one to call. What's going on with PIAA? We're getting close to a. Well, not close, but a deal is coming along. 1.9 million, I had hoped for a bit more actually, so I might use the TV advantage and just try and get that money in the bank. Um, we're very happy with the Goodyear deal, I think. I think I'm going to be a bit cheeky, and I'm going to put 5% of our people on Mercedes, and 5% of our people on Peugeot, and we're going to see we're going to have a dry, uh, an engine supplier showdown, and we're going to see who's offering what. Um, without compromising too much our discussions with Ferrari, in case that still is the best deal on the table. But we're, we're, we're still chasing a multi-year deal. If we can get a two-year deal for tyres and a two-year deal for engines, that means we don't have to negotiate next season or the season after for a team sponsor, an engine sponsor, or a tyre sponsor. And by the time that third season comes around where we have to negotiate for all three, we're going to be much better staffed and much more capable of dealing with that that strain. Let's see what's going on on the design screen. 2002 car is coming along okay. The B-spec car is not coming along as quickly as I would have hoped, but we have improved our brake reliability. So let's deal with that because that is important. So... Um, let's also deal with our electronics reliability problem. I'm going to put 10% on that and I'm going to increase the number of people working on the B-spec car because we want to get that out in a reasonable time frame and it already means at this point we're not going to get it out for Monaco. Um, <clears throat> right, how much does testing cost this time? That is a lot of money to spend on testing when we're in financial troubles. We are going to reduce significantly the level of testing that we are performing. We are going to do 210 miles. And we're just going to put more effort into testing the engine. Which is still our primary focus. Let's run that. not great. We need that testing rig. What we're going to do is reduce what rounds are coming up. I'm trying to, the power hungry tracks tend to come later in the season, so I'm actually going to reduce the weight of the power unit. We've skipped number four, which tells me Persia we're going to bring an engine out next round, possibly. But 
the Arrows Evolution 4 engine has been ordered. Got no new tyres as yet, and we have no new fuels as yet. Uh, what's the damage on the, Niz the Nizmobile? 3%, so he's not totally shafted it, but he's not done himself any favours either. Now we have to drop some more cash on... And actually, spare parts have become more expensive all of a sudden. Which is bad news. The team is living on the edge of its budget at the moment. And I'm tempted... I don't know if it's the right thing to do to cancel... To cancel this factory upgrade. I think there's a way to make it work, but we're going to struggle again when the time comes to hire a wind tunnel. A testing rig is the right thing to buy, I think. And then we can add a supercomputer. Oh, jeez, who even knows? Who even knows? Right, repair the Dinesmobile. Repair that car, repair this car, and I don't know if I need to sell some of the team, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we're not strengthening any, any departments right now, that we've already agreed on. Not happy with the Ferrari deal, um, really not happy with the Ferrari deal. It's only 400,000 more than Peugeot are giving us now. So, it's hard to know. And we are suffering from for our lack of familiarity with, with Persia. We're not getting many points out from testing. So, fortunately the engine is a good, a good engine, all in all. It's not, it doesn't excel in much, many areas except cooling, but it is a solid engine. So, the fact that maybe development isn't as fast or smooth as we had anticipated doesn't necessarily have to be a major problem. Okay, the cars are ready to go. <coughs> I think I'm going to keep things as they are there. And we will set up the cars like this, I think. And I don't know why, but I have a feeling, woohoo, that suddenly Meccano is going to come alive now that he's leaving the team which isn't necessarily a problem don't don't take that as criticism because I do feel that you know it's the least he owes the team for sticking with him and not firing him last season when we should have done um, so if he can you know deliver points consistently throughout the season then I think we can be happy this is um, Round three will give us a pretty good insight into whether we can actually afford to continue at this pace and whether we have to cancel our factory construction. So, best of luck everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 24 degrees and cloudy, which is good for us. And it shows. Uh, Esteban Tuero takes pole for Benetton, 125,994. A full tenth ahead of, uh, well, almost a full tenth ahead of David Coulthard's Benetton. Um, Johnny Newhouse takes third for McLaren, fourth goes to Luca Padoa. Uh, the Niz leads Nakano by a fraction, <laughs> a teeny tiny fraction, which means I think Nakano is going to have the pace in the race to, to, to lead the Niz home. Uh, Wurtz leads Frentzen in the Battle of Jordans, who we've outqualified for the first time this season, and the Stuart Mechachromes of Montemini and Rosset seem to be back ahead of the Prosts, but just barely. And down in Loser Town, it's still Williams two seconds, or the best part of two seconds, off the back of the Tyrrells. 20 degrees, nice and dry. We dance the usual dance of our people. Again, 36-36 for Nakano. I'm hoping these guys deliver ideally a double podium. I don't see why it isn't possible. Um, particularly for Nakano to be on the podium. But Fortune is a cruel mistress. 
and it was a cruel mistress. Um, Esteban Tuero takes the win from Paul for Benetton. Johnny Newhouse takes second for McLaren. Third goes to Heintel Frentzen in the Jordan, who beat Pedro in his home pretty convincingly, actually, by about nine seconds. Double points finish for the Prosts, which I think they've been deserving of for quite some time, hacking and leading home Marini. What took Nakano out? Kuplung. Unfortunate. Same same uh, fault for David Coulthard. Uh, double suspension failure again for the Stewarts. They've got a serious endemic problem in their car. Um, I think they need to reduce the weight of their engine. They probably need a B-spec car and they need to do some technology research into the reliability of their suspension. Hydraulic failures plagued both Alexander Wurtz and Luca Badoa. So we did get a points finish. Uh, we are one point behind McLaren and nine points behind Jordan. Benetton are already breaking out a healthy lead. Let's see if we got any news from the engine suppliers. Mercedes will only offer a partner deal, so no thanks to you. Ferrari, one season works deal worth 11.4 million. 11.8 million one season deal from Peugeot. Two season partner deal from Ford. seems to me, it seems to me, we should be talking to Peugeot. So, we will. Only 400,000 in it, but it all adds up. We're very close to our works deal that we wanted with Goodyear, which is great news, and we've completed the PIAA deal. Very, very important that we got that out of the way so quickly, because that means we can begin talking to our buddies at Danker. Danke schön. I know it's spelled wrong. Don't don't pull me up on it. Um, we're all friends here. And, and you. Uh, great relationship with PIAA. I would like to stick around and get some bonuses from them if possible, but we go after the bonuses on the multi-year deals first. The driver situation is resolved. Commercial is resolved. Design is not resolved because he's gone to Benetton. That is a kick in the bollocks that we really didn't need. <laughs> we really did not need that to happen. I didn't see that coming. That's caught me completely off guard. Um, okay, who's doing good work at the moment? Gavin Fisher, you are not doing good work. Your car is at the bottom. Loic de Guar, your team is at the bottom. Um, you are a two-star, very cheap designer. Actually, I don't know who was at Benetton last year who designed their car. Maybe it was Rory Byrne. We'll go for Otto Goto. He's only getting a one-season deal. He's not even getting that if he carries on with this uh, attitude. Yeah, I think he's the one to go to. Although, no, you're expensive for what you are. You're expensive for what you are. Yeah, we'll try and get him next round. That's a kick in the pants. Um, Nigel Stepney, will you sign with us now? Yes, you will. Excellent. Okay, so we've got some consistency. Um, uh, in regards to the chief mechanic. We made a loss of 777,898. Um, 2.3 million came in, 3.1 million went out. We've been very successful in reducing the costs of um, hospitality, but yeah, I hate to do this, guys, I really do, but we're going to cancel the factory upgrade. We're just going to put it off for a season, just for a season. And, yeah, it's not fantastic, but it's what has to be done, I believe. Red Bull are so great, man. They're still... Prepared. They're still quite friendly with us. SO haters, as we know. Telecom Argentina have fallen out with us because we've completely ignored them over the course of our deal, but whatevs. Um, 
<coughs> Federal Express are about to fall out with us big style. PIAA are big time buddy buddy with us, which is what we needed. Uh, we're 11 million at the moment behind uh, our budget season on season. Let's take a look at the news. Esteban Tuero is very, very happy to have won his first Grand Prix. Um, insiders have reported that we are in financial trouble, which we are. Um, Esteban Tuero won from Paul. Pedro Diniz uh, got fourth, as we know. Alberto Marini has uh, won his first championship point. Giancarlo Fisichella will join us, as we know. Prost is very happy to have both cars in the top six, and I'm very happy for them as well. Benetton have signed Rory Byrne. Toro Takagi has bought a seat at Jordan. That's interesting. And Tyrrell are chasing Damon Hill. That would be hilarious. Okay, uh, the guidelines for next season have been released. Let's see if our car is legals. It is not. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Okay. No gains there then. Stage 1 development of the B-Spec car is complete. Technology is creeping along. On the money front, I'm afraid we're going to have to sell a bit more of the team. I'll sell another 5% and that injection of cash should keep us going until we rebuild some finances by having cancelled the factory. Um, we might find mid-season we start to pick up a lot more money back you know, when we're on the full European season and a lot of our costs come down. We might be able to do that. But, you know, this is good. I'm being able to show you budgetary management. How much is testing at San Marino? Not that expensive, actually. Um, I'm going to take Forshung testing off the menu. I'm going to put more staff on engine to try and get as much data as we can from our engine testing. We're going to drop half a million exactly, 270 laps of testing, and it's all engine all the time for, uh, <coughs> for our test program really. Boom. Excellent. So we've got three points to spend there. I think I'm going to drop a point in rigidity early while we can, and power and reliability. And that's our Evolution 5 engine. It's now on the way. Uh, we've already done the sponsor dance. So Matt, why don't we run round four? It's Sunday after all. Bit of a treat. So let's get some construction work done. Man, the price for our spare parts keeps going up, but that's not how it's supposed to work. I wonder what's going on. Maybe we've got a morale problem. Maybe... Maybe other factors are coming into play. It's very unusual. I'm going to spend the cash anyway, because we need spare parts. And if we have to survive on a supply of spare parts that we build up now to get to the end of the season, then so be it. But at least we've got them. Car 3, I have to say, is holding up like a champ. Okay, just a moment. So, onwards and upwards. Is the cars ready? Apparently there's an upgrade somewhere. I don't know what it's talking about. I think it's talking about this. But I don't want to waste the turn starting a project on something we've already built, so... That can bug it off. We found active suspension. Let's complain about that. And then we'll spy on the Jordans for active suspension. Just try and sabotage them as best we can. Okay. San Marino. Points, 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 point. I know we're not being fair here with our points, but. I think it's necessary, necessarily the case. Yeah, Peugeot did bring out an Evo 4. Oh, there's damage on the Carnot's car. That will not stand. 
That is not acceptable to us when we're on the verge of reliability problems as it is. Good job we spotted that, huh? Okay. Let's do round four dance. 28 degrees and cloudy. Hard to call how that benefits us or hinders us. Continuing with the split strategy. Sixth and seventh. Not bad. Not bad at all, actually. Uh, the Jordans have found their pace again, though Johnny Newhouse puts McLaren on pole. I, I don't know where this boost in performance for McLaren has come from. It's too early to have a B-spec car out. Maybe it's a new evolution power unit or some new tyre compounds, but something has found the uh, the pace for them to out-qualify the Jordans. Uh, David Coulthard leads Esteban Tuero and Benton battled, so that makes sense. And yeah, still the same in Loserville. Although Ferrari have taken some level of step forward. 28 clouds. Same old, same old. <coughs> 31 laps apiece for the Shinge. Right boys, if you're going to deliver big, now would be the time so we can end on a high. Damn it. No points. No points. What happened in the car now? Brake failure. We, we saw it coming. <laughs> we did see it coming. Um, suspension failure for Jan Magnussen. Engine failure for Fisichella. Brake failure for us and Montamini. Accident for Hakkinen. And suspension failure for Tora Takagi. Frentzen takes the win ahead of Johnny Newhouse. Esteban Tuero rounds off the podium. Badoa picks up a fourth for McLaren. Wurtz takes fifth and Coulthard takes sixth. So that's going to push us way back in the uh, in the constructors there. Yeah, ten points now behind McLaren for third and twenty-one points behind Jordan in second. They're getting the benefit of having two solid drivers, I feel. One moment, let me see if I can fix this frame. I don't know what was causing that to happen. Uh, no idea what caused that to happen, but apparently stopping and starting the recording did what we needed it to. Let's just see what's going on in Sponsor Town. Uh, we get two million for two seasons from Danker, so that's excellent. And our work deal is complete with Goodyear. That makes me very, very, very happy indeed. It's a good way to end the episode. We'll leave 10% on that deal and see what we can snatch. Uh, early progress as well with Persia, which is good news. Let's talk to... Let's steal HSBC from Jordan. I think, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll keep Goodyear for one round. 3% uh, damage to car 2, which isn't particularly great. Frame issues again for me, which tells me it's time to finish the video. Just take a look at where we are with the cars. Not much progress. And the CFD stage is finished for the B spec. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope your weekend has been incredible and try not to be too bummed out tomorrow's Monday. I will talk to you tomorrow.